I've had a lot of ex- experience on um, things that will get, bring success and things that won't. <laughs> and I can just save you a lot of time and money right now. And if you just listen to me and, and check this thing out. Came out from the bottom, to the top, to the top. Niggas sleeping, yeah, he punching in the clock. And they call him Mike Bear by the Lambo at the lot. So, guys, this is Brandon Odom. He's kind of like my friend now. I met him a few times, so I'm just going to say he is my friend. He's a super cool guy. Obviously, he's got a two comma club award, like most of the people we feature on here. He's a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to tell him what to say, but I'm going to kind of maybe give him a little advice of what I think I know about him. You guys might be into. He's got a few different things going on. He actually has a brand new, amazing software that him and his partner created, who I actually met the other day. And luckily enough, we're partnering with these guys. So if you guys are cool, maybe you'll get a chance to sell this software. But he's also doing things with a lot of other things. And I know he's been through and done a lot of things. So I just want to introduce you, Brandon. Welcome to our welcome to our house. Welcome to our community. Uh, If you could just I think obviously I just want you to tell your story and talk a little bit about success and what's worked for you and what hasn't worked for you. But you can really take this thing anywhere you want it. But just from knowing you. There's one thing that I know and that we have in common is you've dealt with some shit along the way. (laughs) You've been able to come out of it and persevere. So if you want to just touch a little bit on like maybe failure and what that's done to you and how you were able to overcome that, because on a level where you're at, it's a very high, like a high scale compared to the average person. And I think a lot of these guys in some way or another can relate to being stuck or whatever. So I always like to know like, What was that one thing that drove you? Because you and I have both been through it more than once and we're still here. So take the stage, brother. Introduce yourself. Do what you want. And at the end, we can do a little Q&A and have at it, man. Cool. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad I got introduced to you guys and we we had those conversations. And I definitely appreciate the invite and just the opportunity to come out and, and share with you guys. I've done uh, quite a few webinars in my day. (laughs) Um, but most of, most of them have been, you know, like teaching or training or whatever. And it's just, it's fun to just kind of come out and just, just share an experience. Um, and then just kind of go by, you know, what, what the feedback is and, you know, what value I can, I can deliver, which is hopefully, hopefully a little bit of, of wisdom and hopefully some stuff that might, uh, make you guys a lot of money and, and save you a lot of money down the road. Um, so kind of my background, I, uh, I went to school, went to West Point, went to the military, was going to do, uh, I thought, you know, 20 years be full time, um, ended up deploying to Iraq in 2008, 2009, uh, was there for a year. Um, actually while I was there, I was, I had soldiers all over the place at different bases. So I would fly around the country a lot. And, uh, one of the bases was an air force base, even though I was in the army, but uh, at the Air Force Base, they had a salsa night. And that's when I kind of like found one of what I would say is like one of my passions in life and something I've also um, built a business around as well uh, while we were talking about you know DJing and stuff like that. But um, anyway, fl- uh, fast forward from there, ended up going to Afghanistan in 20, 2011. Um, well, before that, I went to I went to Ranger School, spent extra time there. <laughs> because <laughs> I had recycled a couple of phases. So uh, when you talk about failure and like sucky situations, like I, I you know, relate a lot of it back to, to that experience. Uh, and just, you know, it's one thing when you're like, you know, things are sucking, things are bad. But another thing when it's like things are sucking, they're bad. And you also can't eat. Like you're being starved. <laughs> and you're falling down mountains and stuff in the woods, you know? So I always like compare it to, to that kind of thing. Um, and then in 20, 2011, went to Afghanistan. Um, right when I came back from that, I, or I'm probably why I was there, I kind of made the decision that I wasn't going to make the military a full-time thing or, you know, career. Um, I wanted to do a certain, certain job field and I wasn't allowed to do it. So I kind of got discouraged and was like, you know what, I'm going to, I want to be able to kind of make my own path. I don't want people telling me, you know, this is your job. This is what you're going to do. Um, you know, and, and for years or even a decade or more and just kind of going through an unsatisfying, you know, uh, work situation. 
So that's when I started searching. Probably like most everyone on this call, uh, you know, you guys have obviously all, you know, invested into a program to teach a skill set that, in, in my estimation, is one of the most valuable skill sets you could ever learn. Um, and which we can literally, you can write your own paycheck, set yourself up for life, you know? And so that's what I was started searching for. I, I didn't really have any clue. I had no business background, no sales or marketing background, or, um, even guidance, like nobody, I mean, yeah, pretty much nobody I knew. I guess my mom had started a business before, like she started actually a luxury type skincare business right before the economy crashed in 2008. So obviously not the best time for, for that. And I saw her, her lose that business. Um, but that was really the only taste of entrepreneurship I'd ever seen uh, with anybody like I, I knew or was close to. So I started on the network marketing path. Um, I, I was talking with a buddy of mine. He was in the military as well. We were both at Fort Bragg together. Um, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this, this business thing on the side. And so I was like, all right, cool. And he sent me or you know, brought me to a meeting and I drank the Kool-Aid. I was like, all right, this sounds good. Like I, I didn't know what network marketing was at the time. Like I just was really, really green. Right. And so I got into it, was excited about the companies, tried selling stuff. And I was actually decent at like pitching the products and the opportunity. But then I found like, you know, there's there, there wasn't very highly leveraged, right? You know, tapping people on the, the shoulder at a coffee shop, all that kind of thing. Um, and I started trying to learn more, uh, you know, of a digital marketing skill set, websites and how to get traffic to a website and how to, how to brand myself and create my own offers. And going down that path led me into the world of affiliate marketing. Um, around that same time, I had invested into an advertising company, ended up losing tens of thousands of dollars, actually like, almost $90,000 in that particular venture. Um, and then I got into affiliate marketing, spent another seven, eight, nine months making no money, spending tens of thousands of dollars to the point of like my family almost like trying to have an intervention with me. Like, what are you doing? You're like, you're ruining your life. Like you're throwing everything away. Why don't you go get a job? And this, I already got out of the military at this point. And I was somehow or another, I was just hard headed enough that I understood like this stuff works. This stuff can create a lifestyle far beyond anything else that, that I could, no I could aspire to in a normal nine to five, you know, the time freedom, the money, all that kind of stuff, just the choices, the ability to make choices for yourself. Right. And so I was just bound to determine like, this is the path I'm going down and you know, I actually hit rock bottom, well, below rock bottom financially, because not only did I lose all my money, I also went deep into debt, <laughs> buying courses and programs and masterminds and uh, spending money on advertising and everything, doing, doing all the things, right? And then finally, things started to click enough to where I actually started producing an income. It took me probably... Yeah, probably about eight, nine months before I started making a little bit of money. It was high ticket direct sales. Um, and that was enough not to like, you know, not to start living an incredible lifestyle, but enough to pay the bills and to give me the confidence that, hey, this is working. Like what I'm doing, I actually put the pieces together. This is actually going to work. And then fast forward about another seven to eight months later after that. And then finally, things really started to take off for me. That's when I started having 20 to 40K months. Um, I started doing webinars, email marketing, Facebook advertising, um, was doing a high ticket, high ticket offer, built a system around it, started training other people how to do that without spending a year and a half and tens of thousands of dollars of their own money. Um, some of those people went on to earn their own two comma club awards. Some of them joined Click, you know, Russell Brunson's Inner Circle, ClickFunnels, all that, built a couple of seven figure companies. And then we kind of launched from there into a number of different niches. We, we did e-commerce. We were even cosmetics, uh, started an agency. We launched our own software in 2018. Um, and it's been, it's been a wild ride <laughs> over the last few years. We've definitely made a lot of money and lost a lot of money, uh, you know, getting, a, you know, partnering with the wrong people, uh, you know, kind of getting screwed over a little bit here and there. Uh, to the tune of seven figures several times. Uh, and just, you find out like, 
things when you're just an affiliate and you're making a bunch of money and it's like, you don't have to really deal with customer support or product fulfillment or anything like that. Like it's kind of, it's kind of nice. <laughs> Life's kind of nice, you know? Um, and then once you start building companies and hiring people and training a sales force and, you know, dealing with contracts and partners and just all the things like a real business, you know, then it kind of, it can be kind of stressful. So that's, that's, you know, kind of been my life up till about 20, well, 2020, you know, we were doing some, some pretty big things and then 2020 kind of, you know, did a little sucker punch for us. That was definitely not the, not the year to launch a live event company. Let's just say that. So we spent a lot of, a lot of last year trying to, you know, pivot away from all that kind of stuff, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and legal fees and, you know, uh, refunds for events, stuff like that. And then really just kind of refocused on our, our core principles and, you know, high ticket affiliate marketing, direct sales, uh, running traffic to a quality offer online. And from there, you know, things started to take off again, which has been great. Now we have a, a new offer. Uh, you know, it's a 12K offer that has the software included with it, business coaching program for 12 months. And just really excited about it and already have some people getting some great results with it. So um, that's kind of been my focus now. And then I also have, I mentioned before, um, my passion or what I would say is one of my passions is Latin dancing. I've been doing that for 12 years. Um, got into DJing about three years ago and some music production and stuff because I actually tore my MCL at an event. I got knocked over from the back. Basically, a, a box fell off the back of the truck, knocked me down, tore my MCL the day before my first big fa uh, festival that I was launching, which kind of sucked because I was in crutches <laughs> for my own event. You know, I spent like a year putting this whole thing together and then couldn't really even enjoy it. But, um, so I've been doing Latin dance instruction. I host events. We do an annual festival. We do quarterly larger events. We have another one coming up in two weeks. And then we also um, run dance nights here in Phoenix uh, every week. And we're at the largest events here in Arizona. Uh, and I credit all the, you know, the, the success to that to learning this stuff, right? Learning how to build an audience online, learning how to, how to convert that audience into actual ticket sales, um, which is you know, the thing with you guys, I know being sales professionals or, or, or getting into being sales professionals, one, one thing I would, I would really want to emphasize if you got nothing else out of this, this you know, time together is to really consider long-term what you're trying to build for yourself and building your own asset, building your brand, um, you know, operating your business with integrity, um, you know, not, just under, understanding that it's not about the, the quick commission now. It's about how you treat people, how you deliver, and that you show up consistently over time. Because that's been the biggest thing for me is just just being consistent and like understanding like the clients that I have, them knowing like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pitch them something that I don't believe in. Um, you know that's that's been a huge asset for me uh, to the point where I'm pretty confident. You know if I, everything goes to crap again, you know, like it did in 2020, I'm still not going to be, I'm not going to be left without an income. Like I'm still going to, I'm still going to have an audience. I'm going to still have an asset and a skill set. Um, and, you know, whether you make millions of dollars or you lose millions of dollars, you, like, you can always bounce back. And it's just having that determination that as long as you're doing the right thing, um, you know, you're, you're trying to serve people uh, that the money's going to fall. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of people, make a lot of money and get wrapped up <laughs> in, in big heads and all that kind of stuff. And most of the time it doesn't end up well for him. Um, I sold him on his first, well, I think it was your first online program back in like I was, yeah. a long time ago. Um, yeah. And then he ended up kind of doing the same thing I did for a little while, about seven months, just spending a ton of money, buying everyone's courses, <laughs> trying everything under the sun. And then finally landed on the right offer with, with me, uh, ended up making, I think what half a million your first year. Yep. Yep. And then going on to make seven figures, change the world, all that kind of stuff. So now he's my business partner and we're, we're both top earners in a direct sales company. And he, he, he likes to mention that now he 
kind of outranks me. But no, I definitely outrank Brandon right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, no, guys, uh, I'll just quickly give like a quick, like I won't go as extensive as Brandon did. You can um, if you want, man. We've got time. Um, all right. So uh, about, I don't know, I think it's probably like six years ago. Probably something definitely like that. Canadian, you heard that? Yeah. yeah. About. Yeah. I mean, Canada's a great place. Well, it was. And now, you know, I'm just, I like Mexico. It's a little more free for me, you know? So, but Canada's nice. I mean, it treated me good while I was there. Uh, for me personally, though, like, I love to see new things and, like, explore and, you know, just see the rest of the world other than just what I've seen my whole life in Canada. And I didn't really have that opportunity prior to getting into um, this industry with Brandon. Um which didn't come easily. Uh, I literally pretty much lost everything that I had up until uh, that year where we finally found an offer that converted for me. Um, I had I'd worked in the oil field for about 10 years prior to that. Um, and, you know, I survived a bunch of oil crashes, stuff like that. Um, managed to save a bunch of money uh, when I got into this industry uh, and immediately decided I was going to leave and move to Costa Rica. I wanted to get out of Canada. And I honestly believed at that time that like I could fake it until I like to make it, you know, fake it until you make it. Um, and I honestly thought that I was going to be able to achieve that. Um, but I wasn't able to achieve it right away. I went there. I did the things that everyone said you needed to do, except I never actually hyper-focused into one specific thing and got good enough at it, right? And so what ended up happening was, um, you know, I tried blogging, I tried vlogging, I tried advertising, I tried Instagram growth, I tried all these things and never gave anything enough time to ever generate enough leads to make any sort of money, right? And so I then started trying to cheat the system where, you know, now I'm just throwing money, hoping that something happens for me, right? So I'm buying solo ads, like ridic they're ridiculously expensive for what they actually are. Um, they're, for the most part, they were garbage. Um, and I was speaking to a bunch of unqualified people that didn't want to spend more than $3 on a business. And so, you know, overdoing that for uh, probably, I think it was like five or six months, I moved from um, this like beautiful house uh, on the side of this mountain. I was overlooking the ocean. It was like amazing. Cause I honestly thought in my head, like it's not gonna be that hard. You know, I was like, this is gonna be a breeze. Like pretty much my whole life, I've picked up on things pretty easily. Um, you know, I'm fairly confident. Uh, and so I figured, you know, I, I got this in the bag. Um, shortly after losing about 70, $80,000 in the industry, I moved to uh, basically the ghetto in Costa Rica. I didn't have money to fly home. I barely had any money for uh, food for my family because um, obviously I've just lost all my money. I don't, and I can't get credit because I haven't had a job in over a year, right? I'm not even in Canada and I have zero money in my bank account. Um, and so now I'm pretty much stuck in this weird spot where I don't have money my rent's coming up, which was only like 300 bucks. And I have a two-year-old kid at the same time, you know, and this is a Canadian born kid. This isn't ghetto Costa Rica born kid. And now we're, you know, we're in the mix. Okay. Um, and so uh, after about, I don't know, I think it was like two months into this, um, into this like apartment that I was in, Brandon hit me up and he was like, Hey, I got this offer. I think this is going to be the game changer, which I've heard before, by the way, right. By every single person I ever bought anything from. Okay. And so, uh, I was like, at this point, like I got nothing to lose. Uh, so the only problem was, was the product was $10,000. And this is like, this is why I say to some degree, if it wasn't for Brandon, I wouldn't be here today is because without Brandon, as much as he hates that I outrank him, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to get the money to actually uh, purchase this product. <clears throat> what would have given me distribution rights to be able to sell it? And uh, uh, he got me a shark loan. I had to pay in 60 days. It was for like, I think it was like 11 or 12 grand, but I had to pay 16 grand back in 60, in 60 days. 
keep in mind, I have about $200 in my bank account at this point. Um, and so, I, I mean, I got nothing to lose. I'm literally in the hood of Costa Rica. Like it gets crazy at nighttime. There's drug dealers throwing rocks through their girlfriend's windows and stuff. Like it's, it's a different world, like nothing I've ever experienced. And so I had nothing to lose at this point. Uh, I didn't want to tell my family that I was failing. They had no idea because they obviously told me that this was a bad idea. I should just stay in the oil field. So they think at this point, I'm still doing really well for myself. Uh, but it was just all a front. It was all a lie. Uh, because yeah, I don't, I don't want to hear the, I told you so. Right. So I didn't, I didn't want them to know. Uh, and so Brandon got me this loan. I had $200 in my bank account. I spent all that money in advertising in a four day period. I turned that $200 into 15 K that month. I did 50,000. And then that year I did half a million. Holy crap. And I mean, from That's there. Insane. So I, I, I knew he could do that though. Cause I knew he already had the skill set. Yeah. So it was a pretty cool experience looking at it now, you know, at the time there was like definitely pinnacle moments that had happened to me that had they had not happened and put my back up against the wall the way that it was, I might not have ever gotten to that point where like I would have just committed to being all in, you know, like not, I was half ass committed. That is the dead honest truth. I was not fully committed. And a lot of people are not willing to look at that like themselves um, in that kind of way, right? Because they're biased. They want to say, you want to say to yourself that you're working hard enough and you're doing enough every single day, right? You don't want to yeah. tell yourself that you're not, right? But sometimes you really need to look at it as if you're actually, am I actually doing effective money-making work every single day? Or am I just getting something done just to fill time? And that is pretty much what I was doing the entire time. Busy work. Yeah. And it gets you nowhere. So yeah, it's really, really easy to sit around and spin your wheels and tinker around with a logo or <laughs> oh, I need to change the button on my, on my landing page. Like it's the wrong color. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's the thing that I would be doing. I edited an ad video. I had somebody edit on Fiverr and it's still on YouTube. If you guys seen this, it's, uh, I could get you the link, um, later, but, uh, it has nothing to do with business at all. And I thought that it had like a pretty strong message, um, but there was no call to action on it whatsoever. It was a voiceover of a guy in like Germany. It wasn't even my voice, you know, uh, because I didn't want to do the work. I would rather throw money at it. Um, so until I got to the point of actually figuring it out and getting the work done, that's when I started hitting big numbers. Um, and now to be honest with you, when it comes to sales, it seems effortless. Like I don't even need to try, you know, once you stop trying to sell so hard and like, just believe in your product and believe in your process and, you know, have good, wholesome conversations. Because when I started, that's how I built my business, by the way, I didn't do all this crazy funnel stuff, right? Like I didn't have click funnels mapping people through a, like a, a 30 page offer. Like there was none of that. I was had an ad that said, comment if you want some information. They comment, I would call. I'd have a half hour to 45 minute conversation 10 times a day. Uh, and eventually, you know, that $200 brought in a lot of people on my ads that were commenting, which gave me a lot of good, wholesome conversations uh, and therefore turned into a lot of wholesome money, which was great. <laughs> I think of you as a wholesome guy, you know? Well, yeah. If you have wholesome conversations, you genuinely care about the conversation. You will be astonished of how quickly those conversations can change. Brian, so, what was the offer? The $200? Uh, magic. It was a magic. Okay. Uh, it was a Kangen machine. Nice. Uh, and so uh, it pays like amazing commissions per sale, right? Uh, and now... Like it's been a while since I've promoted it really hard. I've been doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, me and Brandon are actually about to build out some new campaigns with the CRM that he was talking about. Um, uh, but uh, for me, it was just like something that I could resonate with. Uh, I had taken a nutrition course prior. So I had an, uh, like a fundamental understanding of the importance of having an alkaline body. And so, you know, I kind of had a, uh, a bit of an advantage of an understanding on the product before I even got a hold of it, right? Because I didn't, 
I didn't get the product. We went home to Canada. I was in Costa Rica and the water in my tap probably needs more than the Kangen filter. So, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a change my life. Legit. I love that. I love that. That's an awesome story. All Thank right, you. let's get some questions. Donovan, I know you're number one. Um, so one question I had for Brandon, when you lost that 90 K and your family tried to do an intervention on you, what was it that you told yourself that, nah, I love, I love you guys, but you're fucking wrong. And I'm going to keep going no matter what. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just an understanding that like, I don't hold it against them. Like, cause I, I knew they didn't know what I knew. Right. And it's just, it's just yeah. an unwavering faith that like, if, if you do, if you put in the time to, to learn like how it works, right? Like money making is not like, mm -hmm. it's not a, it's not a magic. <laughs> like a lot of people just think like it's very surface level. Like, okay, I, I go to work, I punch a clock, someone pays me. They don't understand like how, yeah. like, oh, it's, my boss just has money. Rich people just have money somehow. They don't understand that yep. this rich person, so-called like they spent probably decades acquiring skills, thinking of an idea or a system or a process to deliver value to the market, putting the logistics in place, hiring the right people, dealing with all the crap, the taxes, yeah. the legal stuff, all this, all this to turn a profit so that you could sell your time to them to be a part of that venture. Right. And that's most people will just, yeah, you know, there's a whole lot of um, just entitlement. Like, well, I just I'm look over that. People me money for being for being me yeah <laughs> and so yeah. i i understood like oh well doing it you know learning how to match an offer to an audience online and you know get the attention put an ad out there or you know we we, we all we, for the most part always done pay traffic um so you know buying attention on a platform to get people to see an ad and follow up with them knowing now what they're interested in and get a conversion and sale on the back end like it just made sense to me. And I was like, this, like, if that guy can do it, if this kid over here can do it, like I, I, I can yeah. do it. Like, I'm going to do it. It's just a matter of like just time, you know? And so I, I just, I just had to kind of, you know, ignore it, which kind of sucks, you know, cause you, people you, yeah, care about you think you're like crazy. Like, I know I wasn't like, I'm, it, it'd be yeah. one thing if I was like high on drugs or something, <laughs> like I'm out of my mind, but no, I'm actually <laughs> in my right mind, you know? And they, they just didn't know what I knew. And so, I mean, it's not an arrogance thing. It's just a certain level of, of confidence in yourself. And, you know, when you start seeing the mailbox full of checks coming in instead of bills, that that's a whole nother level of yeah. like, social proof at that point. It's like, no, see, like this stuff works. <laughs> if you guys could, if you guys lost like everything, like all of your assets, all of your skills, what's the one thing you would keep? What I would consider what most people lack when they start out is focus. It's very easy for you guys with everything that's being promoted and like sold and like you see all these things. And like, you think that because your offer isn't working for long enough, you go and buy another offer or you buy another product and you think that's going to solve your problem or this is now going to solve your problem. And it just lacks a lot of focus. I've seen this literally almost in every single person. Yeah. Uh, that starts a business is they lack focus. And so if there was anything that I like would take, it would be the ability to focus on one single project for a lengthy amount of time. Because like, it's not the skill that I needed. I have no problem talking to people, you know, that that's something that can be very easily developed by repetition. Uh, what's very hard to, um to develop is you know having the brains to do the same thing long enough uh that you can actually get to the point of producing a result with it let's say you lost all your experience except for one skill set or one skill or one yeah. ability what would that be like if you could keep one sales yeah sales. because at that point like you if you lost even your whole network your audience you know whatever you don't have a, an ad budget. Like you can still go to somebody and sell their thing. You yeah. can sell the, the, sell somebody with those resources on why you can help sell their thing and help them make more money. 
foundation. Yeah. So here's so, a good example of that. Somebody didn't have money with Brandon and he said, you can sell my product and I will pay you. And as a result, that person brought one of Brandon's strongest legs in an agile. Love that. And I agree, man, because if you got an idea, but you can't sell it, then what good is the idea? If you had two grand, I'm going to ask you a real question here. If you have two grand to spend on traffic, what product would you put it into and what would you create to use that two grand in traffic? I'd probably save the two grand and go knock on doors or go kind of like access a network. Or I'd contact people that had a network or a list or an audience and try to get okay. it. Yeah, here's that's a, really all you have because the thing is, if you only have two grand to invest in, re it doesn't matter. It's not, oh, it's Google versus YouTube ads versus Facebook. Like it, it doesn't. None of that really matters. But you know, it, what does matter is matching the right offer to the right type of traffic, and then also understanding like, like it's it's if your offer is selling socks versus selling a a fifteen thousand dollar product, and you make a five k commission, like you can afford to pay more to acquire a customer. You could spend all that $2,000 to acquire one customer on a platform and still make a 3K profit with a 5K commission, right? So that's why I was asking like what the offer is and you know, because that all does matter because you know, if it's just like a break even deal, like you spend the money, you make a, a sale or whatever, but you don't have anything left, like what does it matter? You know, how fast do you get paid on the offer too? Is it like a net 30, you know, after closing or, very, very few people ever, if ever, actually okay. make a profit on the front end on solo ads, period. And the life cycle, because you're, you're getting that email traffic, you're getting them onto your list, and then you have to nurture that, right? You, typically, they, there's an offer, but the, the real value in that is building your own audience, building your own list, and then nurturing okay. that, and then selling them something else. So the, the, the timeline to actually see a return uh, that, that could be profitable on a soul ads typically a lot longer, you know? Got you. So basically send the traffic, build your list up and then create a back end offer is what you're saying. And depending oh, on what email, that offer is. Yeah. Like in general though, having an email lead, like email is still like the highest ROI traffic source you can get. It's like 33%, 33 times, you wow. know, if you're going to make $33 long-term if you actually are mailing and you're building a relationship with that list but it's a very long, long time frame, right? Um, so you still always want to build that asset, build that audience. And if you're going to invest money, I would make sure you're investing, if you're into paid ads, I would ensure that you're somehow parlaying that into act, not just trying to pitch something direct to sale, but to actually build your audience. That way you can follow up with them and not have to continue to pay to get you know, attention on your offer. Um, Man, I know you, you're good in copywriting. Not, not to not to ask too many questions with your copyright. What is your style of writing in your email list? How do you write like with your copy? So, um, for a long time, uh, I've been I've been in, like an affiliate manager. So, like we, I've I've ran funnels and like written as different people. Also, myself, you know, with, for for my own webinars and stuff. But you know, we have different funnels that match particular attractive characters, which are real people, but to, you know, a, a group of affiliates that, that run that offer. Right. And so it might be like a millennial girl over here, or it might be, a, like, you know, a couple over here or something like that. So um, I kind of just try to take when I'm doing that kind of thing, just take their personality and, you know, some of the stuff that they write and say, and just weave in like the principles I know, right. About when you're writing copy, building curiosity, not being boring, um, you know, clear call to action, whether that's to buy something or click the link or share or watch a video or whatever. Um, but the, you know, the principles pretty much stay, stay the same. And then in terms of when I do it myself or what I'm promoting or my, my particular um, to my particular audience, it's really just uh, the, the, for me, it's not so much trying to be like a, an authority figure or, like I know better than you or whatever, just kind of more being like a trusted advisor, you know? And so like, Hey, I, I found mm. this, I found this great solution. Like, I know you, you've been interested about this, you know, this way to make money or this way to get healthier or this way to have a better, um, you know, peace of mind or more confidence or whatever. Like, I know this is what you want. And here's the vehicle I found that can, 
that can get you there, you know? And so I just try to position my, my stuff as that. It's like, Hey, like I've had a lot of ex- experience on, um, things that will get, bring success and things that won't. <laughs> and I can just save you a lot of time and money right now. And if you just listen to me and, and check this thing out and I think you're going to be you know, amazed by the results. Right. So, um, that, that's always been my style, but, you know, putting it into still a framework of like writing good copy and building curiosity and not like, not, you know, doing a word vomit on an email or an ad or something. And, you know, you know, giving away everything too soon. One of the things that really, really is important when you're thinking it's not just, Hey, if I have two offers I'm promoting and I can make 3000 with this offer, I can make 3000 with this one. You have to look at like what, what the time frame is to be able to cash flow, right? So one of the reasons we are so big into Enagic is that it, it cash flows so fast um, because on direct sales, you get commission checks cut that you get those checks within like four to five days versus typical affiliate offers. You're looking at a 30 to 45 day payout, right? Okay. Customer buys something online, 14 day trial, and then pay it off out, you know, second week of the month, 30 days later. So if you're trying to run paid ads, assuming you make the same for either offer, the one that's going to pay you faster is going to be typically the better one because then you can cash flow. What are some organic outreach strategies? Do you guys ever use that? Um, anything that, uh, like, what, what are some different ways that you like to do that? <laughs> Brandon's just been, this is like Brand, Brandon's like question. I'll let Brandon answer this because he's just so excited about this. Actually. No, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so for a long time, like for a long time, like we, we kind of specialize in Facebook ads, right? Um, and that was like our, our bread and butter. Um, either conversion ads to straight to a lander or to a webinar or an engagement post to gin up conversations into an inbox, you know, mini chat conversation or, or actual, you know, hand jamming get them on the phone, whatever, you know, um, being that what we were always doing was high ticket. Like it was always worth the time to spend that time with a, you know, a, a potential client. Um, mm. for the last couple of years, we've started to shift more in terms of our training. Facebook's ad, ads are still great. Um, and they still work. You just kind of have to be better <laughs> than you used to be, you know, uh, especially for a newer person trying to get into this space and, you know, setting up a brand new account. Like it's a lot stricter for them. A lot of people tend to, number one, not be as good at it and takes, you know, and if you're spending money on ads, like you want to be putting good stuff out there. Um, You don't just want to be like the first time writing an ad and then putting money behind it. And then, you know, at this point, it can take you sometimes thousands of dollars in testing just to get a campaign going. Um, Oh, and by the way, you never know when Facebook's going to come and slap you and ban your account. And then you can be totally compliant. And they can still shut you down. And then new people, especially like it's always discouraging, but especially new people, it gets, they get more discouraged when that happens. So we shifted more to kind of an attraction marketing, organic marketing uh, style Mm. Um, in terms of teaching people, personal branding content, um, you know, value, education, inspiration type, type content, how to actually match that to a particular avatar that you want to reach out to and matching your offer to that and getting people to do those things right to where the prospects start coming to them and then taking the, you know the content that works and converting that over and putting ad spend behind it because you it's, you've already tested it for free you know mm. and so that was that was has been pretty effective but we've also ran into the problem is it's, it's hard it takes a long time like people you know, it's people get discouraged that way too, because it doesn't happen fast enough or it doesn't happen fast. Like it used to with ads. I can, I can spend money on ads and get a video in front of thousands of people in a single day, you know, and now you're looking at, okay, I've got to, I've got a friend request people. I got to follow people. I got to build a network. I got to post content. I got to wait for that to, you know, kind of bubble up and it's just, you know, hard. And so the other option is cold outreach. So there's two sides of the organic strategy. One's cold outreach. One is like inbound, right? Posting content waiting for them to come to you. <laughs> and then there's cold. Um, problem with that is most people that try to do that, do it in a really spammy, scammy kind of way. Hey, buy my thing, you know, and instead yeah, of, or like, you know, request somebody and, you know, shoot them a message, 
to where it's immediately like they can smell like, oh, this person's just trying to pitch me on something, right? Like this person doesn't care about me. Uh, they're, I'm, they're just trying to use me for money, right? As opposed to actually, you know, figuring out who you're reaching out to, why you're reaching out, how you can actually show that you're in, genuinely interested in what they have or, mm -hmm. or what they need. Um, and then building that rapport, building that relationship, which is the right way to do it. Yeah. Um, the problem with that has, it's always been just really hard, um, to keep track of <laughs> there, there hasn't been a, a, you know, single unified solution on multi-platforms that you can, you can keep track of all that. It's like, I have to, you know, do this, put everything into the software, type everything over, send my messages, keep track of it, or, you know, build a massive spreadsheet which I've done before and it's just, it becomes a lot to the point where then you don't do the follow-up because it's, it's too overwhelming. There's too many conversations. And as you guys probably know, by this point, like 80% of sales or more all happen in the follow-up, you know? And so that's been a, a big problem in the market uh, with organic outreach that we've noticed. Um, some people that actually we got into a magic in 2016 um, they built their first soft They did really well the first year. They built a software a couple of years ago, did seven figures with that. And then they sold that company to us, went off and built another company and then built a secondary software. And now, um, haven't launched it yet, but we are licensing that and selling it as part of a new offer to basically be the solution for that of like how to do cold outreach on Facebook, Instagram, and, um, LinkedIn but in a nice, smooth, streamlined CRM that's personalized, that saves huh. you tons and tons of time. And basically eliminates the, the excuse of, oh, well, my ads just aren't converting. Oh, I just don't have leads. I don't have anybody to talk to. So that's why I'm, or you know, my content sucks. No one wants to watch my video. No one likes my post. None of that matters anymore. Now it's like, now you have people to talk to. You know what to say. You have the pi right pipeline and scripts and stuff. Then it's just a matter of what are you offering? Is it the right offer? And then what are you actually saying when you get them on the phone or however you're, you're converting, whether you're sending to a webinar or, or whatever. Um, and that's part of what we're actually putting or we're, we're doing in terms of our, our coaching program is helping people um, with the offer tweaking, with the conversations that they have once they actually get the prospect on the phone and that whole kind of thing. Both of you, if you, if you would, what is something you learned later in your career that you wish you would have done sooner before actually putting work into a project, making sure you have all the expectations outlined and contracts and NDAs and non-competes all in place hmm. because so far we've lost what a million dollars, three times <laughs> not doing that. Right. Yeah. It's very easy to tr just be like, yeah, I trust you, man. Like, with, even but with that, does yeah. hold up. that does not hold up. I don't care how much you trust them, like get those in place. And it, to be honest with you, it actually makes for me, I've noticed it makes a deal a little bit um, more comfortable for everybody, you know, because like now we're going to do this, like people need to get in the habit of just doing things properly. Like yeah. this NDA doesn't just protect me. It also protects you. If you know what I mean? Like you don't want, you don't want no liabilities, man. Like I'm telling you, we have, we've done all that because we did not have contracts in place. And then when people are like, I want my money. And then they send in a dispute to their bank and the bank just takes that money. And you don't have a contract to say that this person signed this contract. Right. Uh, and uh, I have proof from my end that this was the agreement. Like none of that's going to hold up. Yeah. And the bank's taking your money whether you like it or not. And then once that one person knows they can do it, if there is another unsatisfied customer, um, which is going to happen no matter how good you are at what you do, um, they're going to start repping them out. They're going to tell somebody else. The next person knows. And people want everything for nothing. You know, mm -hmm. and if there's a slight inclination that there's something that they paid for, that they can get their money back just by doing one simple little task because things weren't in place, I promise you they're coming to get their money. Yeah, and, that, and that's just on the consumer side, but also on this the partner side or affiliates or you know joint ventures, all that kind of yeah. thing. Like, be, I mean, like, 
in this space, especially like you might go to a, a, a you know, a 10 X conference or something, right. And you meet some great people and y'all are, you, know, you have some drinks at the bar and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. You're working on this. I'm working on this. All right, cool. We should do something together, which is fine. But then that should be followed up with, okay, here's the actual, here's what we're doing. Here's the outcome. Here's your responsibilities. Here's mine. You know, here, here's what the payout structure is going to be. Here's when it's going to be, you know, this is how long the term of this, this, you know, venture is going to be um, all that kind of stuff, which most people don't, don't ever do. And then right. it turns into, Oh, that guy's stealing my audience or he's, he's selling them this thing or he's cross promoting. And it just, it, it's a lot better to settle all that up front, you know, gotcha. and, and everyone, gotcha. everyone is a lot um, more clear on their roles and you don't waste money and waste time. Uh, I would also say, uh, again, I always revert back to this because so few people have it is focus. Like the level of focus that I had when I was successful versus when I was not successful is significantly different. Um, and, uh, and because of that, I got a completely different result. Right. And so it's so easy to be biased about yourself. As I said before, you need to take an honest audit of yourself, whether you like it or not, right? Like whether you like what you're looking at or not to literally look there and just be like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. And do I have too many things going on that I can't properly on one thing? Am I good at anything or am I just mediocre at everything? Mm -hmm. Like, you could be mediocre at everything. And if you're disciplined and consistent, still outperform yeah. people most, that are really talented. Yeah, most people. Um, and so all of that, all of those questions, being honest with yourself, sitting down, writing them out, like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing every single day? Is yeah. the first thing on my, my mind is acquiring more leads and acquiring more sales. Anything outside of that doesn't matter. So for me, like, I would start vlogging. I would start blogging. I would start, you know, doing all these things that didn't actually impact my income in any way, thinking that just putting it out there would just somehow bring me more money. But those activities did nothing for me in the short, in the short, in today, right? Yeah. So until I've acquired more leads and talking to more people, I shouldn't be even thinking about that stuff. I should be thinking about how I can get more leads. And if leads aren't a problem, then what I should be thinking about is how should I get more sales or how can I get more sales? And, and if, if sales aren't the problem, then it should be, how can I turn these sales into a long time recurring asset that continues to pay me? And how can I scale? Like, so every single, every single step presents a new problem to solve. Right. So like every single, I'm telling you, this is never going to be a straight shot and you're not just going to make it. It's not going to be easy. Every single step is just going to be another like better problem. You know what I mean? Like you're just going through the motions of acquiring better problems. Right. Mm -hmm. And over time you get to a point where you're like, man, I'm like now none of this sound feels like it's a problem or it's hard at all because now I've slowly acquired every skill set and perfected my craft where now it seems effortless, right? Like yeah. I know a guy, he's a day trader. This guy can make $45,000 like that. He's been trading since he was 15 years old. He doesn't even need to think about it. But the journey from there, learning from his father and all of that stuff, like it was hard. Every single way, like every single step presented another problem. And, you know, he would go through uh, moments where, you know, his, his psyche is off today, you know, maybe is he got in trouble uh, from his dad or his mom or something like that. And then, you know, he's looking at charts and now he's making mistakes. Like all of these things can happen in every single business. Um, and, you know, you just really need to learn to identify what they are um, and just learn to, you know, grow through it. That, that kind of what you mentioned there, I think would align nicely with like what you guys do in terms of, of sales and stuff. But what most and I, I, I'm not, I mean, I've looked at your stuff. I don't know. I'm not super familiar with the program. I just haven't gone through it myself. Um, but I would say one thing in, in a lot of sales trainings that's lacking um, is helping people identify like what, what state you're in 
prior mm. to starting the sales process, like trying to prior to getting on a, on a call, right? And monitoring that and making sure like, hey, if I'm about to show up on a call for somebody, like I need to be in a certain state myself because I could say the same words that someone else says and yeah. not have the right energy behind it to where that person feel like that person doesn't close because you know, just because I'm, I'm having an off day, even though I'm saying the right stuff, I'm not saying it in a way that way that really resonates, or I'm, I'm just, you know, thinking about myself, I'm inward focused, mm -hmm. not about act. And then I, maybe I miss something that the, the prospect says um, that I need to hone in on. That is actually the point of resistance that if I can overcome that right then, then there's not going to be, you know, an exit door for them when it comes time for the offer and to actually close. Right. Um, but you may not miss, you may not think of that or, or pick up on that if you're, you know, too focused on yourself or whatever, or you're just not, you know, uh, you just don't have the right head on you when you go into the call. And that's, a, that's, I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone in pretty much any, any course, like of any quality I, I've seen is like, they always talk about mindset. Um, sure. But mindset is really just everything with, with this stuff. The skill set is so I mean, mm -hmm. it's important. It, it's certainly important, but yeah. mindset overwhelmingly, like if you just have the right mindset, you're either going to acquire the skills that match it, or you're going to acquire people, other people that have those skills. Like Brian has amazing <laughs> skills that, you know, I don't have. I certainly have a few skills he don't have, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but he can, he can, he can relate to people in a different way than I can. Right. And so you'll acquire people that, that can do things that, you know, make up for your certain weaknesses to where you guys can both succeed as long as you, you know, are aligned with like what, you know, the direction you want to go and the mindset. And that's, that's everything. Your Avenger squad. Love it. For me, it's like, uh, I grew up in sales. My dad was really big in it. So we had a saying that was called Showtime that he used in his company. It was like, it was retail sales. It was like, what do you want the sales for to do? Sell. When? Now. What time is it? It's Showtime. And when you, for me, Showtime is like, when I get that, that in my mind, I can just turn it on. And I remember one time we were in Vegas. We used to have a training center in Vegas where we do all of our seminars with clients and like private stuff. And I was like 20, maybe 19. I had a fake ID. Me and my dad, this is my dad. I shouldn't even say We were out till like four or five in the morning, like gambling and drinking. And this guy wakes up at six o'clock after sleeping for like two hours. He's like 50 years old and he turns it on and kills it and presents for like 10 hours that day. And it's just, it's really, it's a mindset. And once you get the mindset and once you have that practice and you have that, like, um, it becomes something that's like, it's just natural to you. It starts to turn on. It's like a pattern mm -hmm. of time and it's part of your routine. And, and when you get that, it can really change whatever you're doing that you have to show yeah. up. For. I, yeah. uh, so on, on my, one of my side businesses, I, I teach dancing and I host events and all this kind of stuff. Like, and these are like part, like I'm naturally like an introvert, like 20, I don't know, 20 years ago in high school. Like I never would have been like, the party guy, right? That was probably Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%, that was sure. Brian. But <laughs> when I'm about to have a class, and so I, I put the mic on, and I have a hundred people there, and it's you know it's it's night, like everyone, you know, people had a couple of drinks, they were starting the class. Like I turn that on, mm -hmm. I make some jokes, like you know, have interaction, like all that kind of stuff, um, because it's just like that's the state I'm in, right? And I'm trying to sell them like. I mean, at that point, they've already paid. I'm trying to sell them a good experience, so they want to come back. You know? Yeah. So you're so choosing to uh, extrovert. Yeah. So I like have to turn on the, you know, kind of the extrovert. Yeah, me too. I'm we live in an extroverted yeah. world, man. What we're doing, everyone in here that's trying to, that's doing sales, or you guys marketing, presenting, getting on masterminds, hosting like dancing, whatever it is, webinars, we got to have an extroverted switch. And then you can introvert all you like. When I'm done for the day, like, I'm cool. Leave me alone. Go hang out. Yeah. Necessarily, like, I, I'm a confident person, but I don't necessarily just walk around saying hi to everybody. Like, I don't. Same. <laughs> same. But at the same time, like, and to be honest, sometimes I just, like, genuinely don't want to have conversations with people. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be in a state where I'm just like, I don't want to talk to new people. Today. You know, like, if somebody says hi, I'll say hi, but I'm trying to avoid conversation. 
you know, because, you know, when I want to, when I want to use my skill set, I want to use it. When I don't want to, I really don't want to, right? I don't want to necessarily yeah. always be having these genuine good conversations and like, just like blasting it all the time to the point where I just get sick of having these conversations, you know, like, cause I genuinely enjoy having conversations where I enjoy the engagement between two different people and the conversation that happens. But sometimes if I'm not in the state of mind where I want to have those conversations, I can't like physically yeah. really tune in to what that person's saying. And then like, like fake. The relationship anyway. So I may as well just not have the conversation. Right. And so for me, like I float around life in different ways, you know, like sometimes I'm super on, like today I feel on other days, like I don't, mm -hmm. you know, and I probably shouldn't jump on a phone call and try to do a sale and ruin it. If I feel that way, you know, like I'll reschedule, yeah. pay attention and like being honest with myself. That has been one of the biggest things that I could honestly say has taught me so much was just being honest about how I'm feeling. And if I don't feel a certain way and it's not going to be, you know, optimal performance on my part, like it's better to, to save it for another day, you know, and reschedule until I feel that way, you know, and it saves me and makes me probably a lot more money than it does by going about it in that way. When you guys joined Enagic, did you guys already have sales skills that you applied to that company? Because I had a high school friend try to sell me on joining Enagic. His pitch was terrible. All he said was, introduce it to your friends and family and uh, the product will sell itself and the okay. checks will come rolling in. And he had pictures of checks that he would <laughs> post. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it never caught. But yeah, he wasn't providing any skill Hello? set or training <laughs> or anything. Yeah, that's the, that's the old technique. So in that drink, they they do not do business. When we came, let's put it this way. When we came to Enagic, we broke complete like company records in terms of how many products were sold in how much time, because we weren't doing what they were all doing where they were like, Oh, just tell some friends and family. Like I've never done a water demo. I don't even know how to <laughs> I don't even know how to believe it or not. I actually got made fun of this from somebody that I outrank in an adjunct that he can't believe that I can sell this many machines that have never or don't even know how to do a water demonstration. And wow. Like, oh, okay. You see, that. the product's good. I believe in the product. I will tell you what I know about the product. But like, the more that I talk, the more I'm going to have to convince you later with all your questions, right? So yeah. if I tell you yeah. more, that leaves more questions because you understand less. Mm, right. Less is more. Well, the more that I'm talking, the bigger, the bigger the hole I'm digging for myself to deal with after I'm done explaining the product, right? And so like, I get to a point where I'm like, I found this flow where in exactly half hour, I could be from what the product does, what the compensation plan is, and how to buy. And now I'm gonna walk you through finance. Yeah. In 45 minutes, I have walked you through financing, got you paperwork, told you you need you have 24 hours to get me the paperwork back before that paperwork is invalid, which is a complete lie, but it creates urgency, <laughs> right? But, and so like, I told them like, oh yeah, Enagic, this is what I used to literally do. I tell them, Enagic doesn't like us just sending out paperwork to anybody, like only people that are actually gonna do this. So they basically put a 24 hour time sample on when this can be sent back. So please get it sent back to me in 24 hours and I will send it to them. Uh, and we already went through- That is hours. slick. Yeah. So I would do that. Yeah. I'm taking that. I'm definitely taking that. Yeah. Repetition. Once I found what worked, I never strayed. So with, with the simple work. So the magic wasn't, wasn't the offer, right? The magic's the product and the vehicle, but the offer we would always pitch is like, it's, it's a system and a mentorship program. So the reason, you know, your buddy probably didn't make any sales or whatever, or was terrible at it is the reason most right. people in any either direct sales or network marketing company don't make sales. And like they don't talk to enough people to get the feedback for what actually works beyond family and friends. Like building yeah. any kind of those businesses, you if you have any kind of results, you're always going to run out of people. You're always going to want to run more market. So you need yeah. to have a consistent way to generate leads either through paid advertising or organic marketing, attraction marketing, cold outreach, 
outside of family and friends. And so that's what we had in place and what we showed people. And the reason we could afford to do paid advertising is because the Nagic paid so much because of high ticket commissions. So now, hey, I can go ahead and spend a couple hundred bucks in advertising and have a, a you know cost per acquisition of $150 for a front end client because I know I can make thousands of dollars on the back end. And I knew what the numbers were and the conversions on, on mm -hmm. that and how many leads I needed to get onto a webinar, how many, what closing percentage we had on the webinar, how many of them would go through the pipeline and how many would actually purchase on the back end and what mm. they would buy. So once you know yeah. that, then you can, you can put money into advertising to never have to worry about not having enough people to talk to. Most network marketing companies <clears throat> can't do that because the product packages don't just don't pay enough, you know, mm. to make it worthwhile to do paid advertising. And there's also compliance things with BizOp and Facebook that make it harder with, if you don't have the right, you know, the right guidance from people that know how to make or help you make offers that are compliant to where you're not going to get your ad account shut down. You know, the dynamic duo, man, I'm super excited. You guys were on here. I knew it was going to be a good one just cause I already met you guys. Yeah. And I, I just really like you guys. We had a good bond. So number one, thank you so much. For <coughs> and number two, I'm super excited for the future that brings with us and some of these guys that are going to be slamming the shit out of your new product. So okay. sure. thank you so yeah, much. Appreciate. We'll see you soon. Okay. Have a wonderful day. I keep it real with the folks and I keep it real with the streets. Come on.